family, welcome to our Sunday Tribe Gathering. I'm so glad you're here. My name is Margo and I have a few announcements to share before we continue with service. First, I want to give a shout out to everyone who came out to our CAM Serve Day yesterday. A bunch of y'all showed up, worked hard, and got stuff done. So thank you all so much for giving back to our community and to our city. Now speaking of CAM, every holiday season they have a Christmas store to help our under-resourced community provide gifts for their children. So we wanna help them out with that by providing new unwrapped gifts for children, infant through 17 years old. We will be collecting these gifts on Sunday, December the 8th. Now speaking of the holidays, we will be having Christmas Eve services on Tuesday, December 24th at 5 p.m., 7 p.m., and 11 p.m. Kid City Children's Ministry will only be available at our 5 and 7 p.m. services. We'll also be having baptisms on Christmas Eve, which will be super exciting. So to sign up for that, please visit a kiosk in the lobby or cafe, or sign up at citytribe.church slash baptism. Okay, and one last thing I wanna mention, and it's pretty exciting, is that we have some new parking spaces available to us right across the street behind the church off Center Street in the Baldwin Apartments parking garage. So if you're coming down East Commerce from the highway, you'll wanna take a left on Hofkin, and then a left on Center, and then your last right before Chestnut and into that parking garage. We'll have our parking flags out there, so keep an eye out for those. All right, that's all I have for you guys today. We have our youth pastor here to conclude our Happy Now series. So let's give a rowdy tribe round of applause for our city youth pastor, Robbie Quintero. Cool, 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 cool. What's up, tribe? How you guys doing today? We doing great? One person's like, yeah, I love this place. Everybody was just like... It's cold outside. You know, it's fine. Uh, well, hey, I just want to welcome you guys to City Tribe, those watching in the cafe, listening by way of podcasts. Uh, you know, we're super excited that you've chosen to come and hang out with us today. Um, that being said, hey, let's stand together. Let's stand together. I think one thing that was very significant with uh, my church experience when I was younger was I, my youth pastor would have a stand while he read the word in, in, in honor of it. And so we're going to do that today. And so you can read with me on the screen. We're going to be in Mark chapter 2 today. Um, and so uh, basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to read you guys a whole bunch, and, and I'm going to preach a little bit. And so uh, just stick with me. There's 12 verses, and we'll get right through this, all right? Um, uh, you can read me here. It says, a few days later, when Jesus again entered Carpanium, uh, the people heard that he had come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came bringing, uh, him, uh, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. And when Jesus saw their faith, everybody say their faith. Their faith. Oh, come on, everybody say their faith. their faith. Their faith. He said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. I mean, who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately, Jesus knew in his spirit that this is what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, why are you thinking these things? I mean, which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want, to, I want you to know that the Son of Man has the authority on earth to forgive sins. And he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. And he got up, took his mat, and he walked out in full view of them all. And this amazed everyone. And they praised God, saying, we have never seen anything like this today. Like this. Well, not today, but it's in the verse. You get it. <laughs> and so today, I want us to, to receive today's word with a mindset that, that God can do something amazing here today. Um, and where we can walk out and we can say, man, I've never seen God do anything like that before. And so let's pray together. Let's pray for this truth, and then we'll get started. And so, Lord, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for every single person that has walked into these doors. God, I pray that today that, you know, you, that we are just amazed by you, not just in this place, but we are amazed by you once we leave this place and begin our week. Um, God, I pray that you just uh, give us open hearts, open minds, open ears to the words that you have to say today. And I pray that you bless our time together. Lord, we love you, we thank you, we praise you, and it's in your name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. oh, come on, everybody said, Amen. Amen. Take a seat, guys. Take a seat. High five the person next to you. Tell them you're God's best. And we'll get started. Cool, cool. Hey, so, uh, hey, that's it. Just you're God's best. Everybody's like, hey, you're God's best. And what are you going to do for lunch? Let's just, you know. No, you're God's best, guys. I love you guys. So for the past couple of weeks, we have been in a series called Happy Now, where we have been challenging 
you guys and, and really walk, taking this journey together as a tribe to discover what a life to the full looks like. And in the first week, we discovered um, what it meant to get our joy back. And in week two, Pastor Humby uh, challenged us quite a bit um, into, and showed us how to spend our time to the full. In fact, can we give Humby a round of applause just for his awesome work last week? I mean, thanks, thanks to him, my screen town is down, is down like 30%. So it's pretty incredible. Uh, but man, we were blessed to have him come preach with us. And, um, you know, one of the, and today we're going to conclude the series and it, with, the title, with the message I'm titling, Check Your Tribe. So turn to your neighbor and say, Check Your Tribe. All right, turn to your second option and say, Check Your Tribe. Now, now one, thing that we, one thing that we have learned and has been a common theme throughout this entire series is is the fact that there, we have a God and we have an enemy in the devil who has a plan, a purpose, and a blueprint for our lives. And we see that truth in John 10.10 10, where, where the Bible says, The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy, and I, being Jesus, have come that they may have life and have it to the full. And there's no doubt, there's no doubt that we see these two plans play out in the relationships and the friends that we surround ourselves with. In fact, there's a, you know, a famous philosopher, and he, and he says this. Here's the tip. Show me your friends. I'll show you your future. Keep the change. Um, that philosopher's name was Armando Perez, or Mr. Worldwide. Um, Pitbull, if you guys didn't catch that. Um, and and it's, it's silly. And I might be the only Pitbull fan here, but that's fine. Whatever. Like, I'm rocking Dale by myself, and it's cool. But, but what's, what's significant about this is this shows me this shows me something that is, com- is a common theme throughout our entire world, not just in our faith, but in our entire world, that the people that you keep around you, the company that you keep around you says a lot about you, says a lot about you. I mean, I can give you study after study that shows you that, man, it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how strong you are, how smart you are, how fit you are. You, be, you, know, you eventually will start acting and living like the people that you keep closest to you. And so that's why all throughout Scripture, God gives us this, you know, gives us a challenge and really warns us, you know, and, and challenges us to choose who we do life with um, very wisely. That we have to choose who we do life with wisely. Now, I'm, I'm not talking about your acquaintances at work because I'm sure, you know, we have a lot of friends at work. And I'm not talking about who you happen to have class with that semester because we all know that the moment that you don't have class with them anymore, you don't ever talk again. Now, I'm not talking about those type of friends. What I'm talking about are the friends that you can't go a day without talking to. I'm talking about the friends that you consider as close as family. I'm talking about the friends that, that there is an emptiness if you're in your life when they are not Around. I'm talking about those kinds of friends. And God gives us a warning and says, hey, I want you to choose those wisely. Paul writes here in 2 Corinthians 6 where he says, do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what, does, for what, uh, for what do righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? Now, what Paul is not saying is, you know, don't you know, avoid every unbeliever in the entire world. And don't, don't ever be friends with people who don't believe the same beliefs that you do. No, because there are some incredible people out in this world that you ought to go meet, and, and they're awesome. But what, he, but, and what he's not saying is you know, don't you know, go work out with a non-believer or you know, don't go out to dinner with a non-believer. Um, stay, you know, avoid the entire world and stay in your Christian bubble like bubble boy and just like don't let anything touch you that's not holy. Like, he, he's not saying this, um, but what he's saying is, is don't yoke up with people who are non-believers, because the truth is, the truth is that when we accept Jesus into our lives, we acknowledge that he wants not only our heart, but he wants everything else around it, and that includes the hearts of our friends. And, you know, the, the, the problem is that we don't really, you know, understand what this means because we're not farmers, and so that word yoke is weird, and, and essentially what it is is, you know, there's, you know, farmers would take this wooden device and they would place it on two oxen, and these ox will then go and plow a field together. And if they were paired up correctly, they would, they would, you know, plow the field in a straight line. But if one was stronger than the other, then chances are they would end up going in zigzags or even worse, they would go in circles, not accomplishing anything. And some of you guys know exactly what this is like because if, if you, you know, it's not that you don't have desires or it's not like, it's not that you don't have, you know, dreams for your life. But anytime you try to step out and live out those dreams, then you find your life just going in zigzags or you find yourself back to exactly where you started, um, a place that you were trying to escape a year ago, but now it's 2019 and it's about to be 2020 and you're still struggling with the same thing that you have been struggling with for an entire year. And, and chances are it's because we haven't stopped and taken a moment and said, okay, well, let me check my tribe. Who am I yoking myself 
up with, and are they leading me to the right uh, places? And so um, I want to challenge you today. We're going to check our tribe. So turn to your neighbor and say, check your tribe. You know, an, an easy way to, to kind of illustrate this is, is uh, I'm going to have my friend James come out here. And, and so, you know, this, I see this happen all the time here at, at the tribe. And, you know, what happens is, is James and I, we're buds, um, and James starts coming to City Tribe, and it's the best experience ever because it's the best church ever. I get it. Okay, and so, um, so, so James meets Jesus, and he gets baptized, and it's awesome. And so, James, if, you, if you've ever, you know, stepped into a relationship with Christ, you know, like, the moment that you step in, you feel like you've just been elevated. Like, you feel like, oh, my gosh, nothing can stop me. And so, James feels the same exact way. And so, he steps up on this. And so, he's, so he's up here, and then he gets this mindset. He goes, man, my friends need to know about this. My friends need to know this. And so, he goes back to his tribe, the tribe that he came from, the tribe of, of knowledge that he has yoked himself up with. And he's saying, hey, I'm going to try to pick you up to my level. I'm, try, I'm going to try to elevate you to my level. I'm trying to save you. And so what happens is try to pick me up. I mean, just lift me up. And you're a strong guy. I just try, I mean, really, like, like are you trying here? Like, I'm just kidding, but um, <laughs> see, but the, but the thing is, and this is, this is, you know, universal, universal truth. And the way that, the way that James is trying to save his friends is, is a, a thing that we often do. You know, we, we get in these mindsets that we, we need to save People, like we need to say, we date like this, by the way. Like we, we look for, you know, people and we're just like, Pastor Robbie, he's a cute guy and he's a really good guy and he, met, and he might meet Jesus and I could save him. You know, like that's not how that works. And some of you guys are here right now because a person that you have the hots for is trying to flirt to convert you right now and it's, and it's not going great. You know, so don't, so don't date like that, but also don't yoke up your friendships like that because we know we know that it is so much easier as you're trying to pull them up that it is so much easier to pull somebody down back to the level that you came from you know, as you try to play hero ball. Because here's the thing, it's not your responsibility to save people. That's Jesus' job. It's, it's only your responsibility to, to stand up on that platform and say, hey, come with me. Send out that invite. You know? So don't yoke yourself up. Don't do life because with, with people that are pulling you down, you want to do life and you want to yoke up with people that are lifting you up. Turn to your neighbor and say, check your tribe. Thanks, James. Appreciate it, man. Round of applause for James, guys. I've been beating up all week. And so we have, a, we have an awesome example of this in, in a story that we read here at the beginning where we have, you know, we're in Mark chapter 2 and we have a man who is paralyzed and he has four friends now we don't know a lot about this man we don't know his name um we just know his condition and and the uh their condition is that this man's paralyzed and he has four friends that come over to his house they pick him up they take him to um, a service that jesus is teaching at because they see something in him they see that he has a situation he has a problem that that they can't fix but they know the person that can and so they take this person to uh, the place of Jesus. And in a moment, in a moment, this man comes face to face with Jesus. He is saved. He is forgiven. And then he is healed. And this is an amazing story, especially considering the context of this time. So think about this. Okay. So this man lived in a time where if you were paralyzed, if you were sick, if you uh, had any sort of disability, that you were considered cursed by God. That people looked at you and they viewed you and said, you are cursed by God is actually because of your sin that you are the way that you are. And so this, so this man lives in this society that tells him you're not good enough, you're not welcomed, and in fact, you should probably just get out. And I'm sure some of us today, we, we feel the same exact way. You know, we feel like because of the, the thing in our life, the thing in our life that is, that is keeping us in this season, that we feel like we are paralyzed, that we are never going to find escape from this moment, we feel the same exact way, and we so badly want a breakthrough the way that this man had his breakthrough. Because the moment that he started walking, he was no longer viewed as an outcast, but in fact, he was just like everybody else. And so, if we took a moment to check our tribe, to check the people around us, then we too might be able to find freedom the way that this man did. And so there are three things about this man that we are going to look at and, and based off of these three things will determine the type of tribe that we surround ourselves with. First, he, did not, he didn't tolerate uh, being treated like a victim. He did not tolerate being treated like 
a victim. I mean, he lived in a society that told him, you're not good enough. You know, you, you're, you should be an outcast. You should just go on and get out of here. Yet he had four able-bodied men who no doubt lived in a society that if they communicated with this man, if they even touched this man, that they would be considered unclean. Yet he didn't have, he, he chose to, to not have this victim mentality. He says, hey, I'm going to surround myself with people who I know are going to treat me normal. And so he didn't tolerate this victim mentality. And, and here's the thing, and I bring this up because there's no doubt, you know, life happens and sometimes it's hard. In fact, turn to the person next to you and say, life's hard. Yeah, life's hard. And there's no doubt things that happen in our lives that, that we can't control. And when those things happen, it's, it's miserable. And it, it's so difficult. And, and what's far too easy is for us to, to, to receive those things and then fall into this mentality where we think to ourselves, like, man, poor me. Like, man, like, my life sucks. I, I you know, am going to be stuck in here forever. Like, I'm always going to be this way. You know, it's easy to fall into the mentality of, like, God, how can you do this to me? It's, it's easy to allow that to happen. And I'm not trying to downplay what you've gone through. You know, there's no doubt that we have, there, there are people in here, and you may be one of them, that have gone through some real stuff. You know, and I'm not trying to downplay that. But what I am challenging you to do is to change the way that you think about the problems in your life. I mean, it's a practice that the Bible says, taking your thoughts captive and making them obedient to Christ. Because here's the thing, the devil has a plan, a purpose, and a blueprint for your life. And there was no, there's nothing he would love more for your life than for you just to stay stuck in the same exact season, month after month, year after year, always feeling bad for yourself and always feeling like, like there's no hope for you. But in fact, that's a lie because if, if, if the God that I serve is is real, then that means that his promises are real. And the promises for us is that we're going, that we can have life to the full if we choose to have that life to the full. See, I don't know a lot about this man, but I know about his company. And his company tells me that he says, don't treat me like a victim. And so I want to challenge you today as you, can, as you check your tribe, as you think about the people that you surround yourself with, I want to challenge you to think, does my tribe coddle me and enable me or does my tribe challenge me and empower me? Because I have a feeling that today, you know, we feel, way more, we feel way more comfortable with people that are always feeling bad for us, that are always saying, oh, it's going to be okay, we're going to get through it. Or they're going to challenge you and say, no, like, this is not you, this is not your future, this is not your destiny, this is not what God has called you to, and so I need you to trust us that we're going to get through this. Are they going to challenge you, or are they going to call you? And so um, I want to encourage you to find a tribe that challenges you and that empowers you. Turn to your neighbor and say, check your tribe. Check your tribe. Next, um, the second thing that we learn about this man is that he wasn't insecure around stronger people. He wasn't insecure around stronger people. You know, he's humble and he's smart enough to ask, to ask for help wherever um, he needed. In this case, he needed strong people around him to take him wherever he was going to go. He needed people who had legs that were strong so that he can go to the places that he knew he wanted to go. And here's the thing, you can conquer the victim mentality by yourself, no problem. Like, I mean, it's, it's very possible. I know people that do it all the time. Um, you, can, you can overcome the mess of life all alone, and you can just walk this earth thinking to yourself, like, it's cool, I don't need anybody, it's just me and God, and that's all I need. You know, and and that's, that's very possible. What happens is, you know, when you do that, then, and, and you say, like, I just need me, it's just me, then, then this, you know, pride will then take root within your heart. And, you know, instead of surrounding yourself with people who are strong where you're weak or, or who are smart where you're not, you know, you're surrounding yourself with people who are at your level or lower. And that really results in people being codependent on you. So if you walk around and you have a friend group and they're just like, they just depend on you for everything. They depend on you to be strong. They depend on you to figure it out. They depend on you for everything. Then chances are you probably need a new tribe. I mean, if you're the smartest one in the room, then you need to go to a different room. You know, because it is so significant to have people around us that are smarter than us, that have gone further than us, that, that um, are stronger than us. Because in the moments that we have our shortcoming, which we do, you know, every single one of us has a moment in our lives, you know, in that moment that we face it, and then we can have the security to say, hey, I can reach out to this person because I know that they're strong in this area where I struggle with and they can teach me something. Or I can reach out to this person because they are smoke. They're, excuse me, they're smart in this area, and they can teach me something. 
And so I want to, you know, encourage you, like, man, if you are, if you are insecure around stronger people, if you, if, if smarter people, you know, uh, you, you avoid them because you want to seem like you're the smartest, man, I want to challenge you to check your tribe because, because when you do that, then you'll be able to walk in the truth that, that Paul gives us in, in uh, uh, 2 Corinthians 12, verse 9, where he's talking to Jesus, and, and Jesus uh, says to him, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that Christ's power may rest on me. You can walk in this truth that God's grace is sufficient for you. It is enough for you. And, you know, where, where you are weak, God is strong. His power is revealed. And oftentimes that power is revealed through your tribe. Because if we have this God who knows every single thing about you, who knows, you know, the, the hair on your head, who knows every single thought and word that you've ever spoken or ever will speak, then, then you, without a doubt, should know that you have a God who knows the exact people that he needs to place around you to take you where God is calling you to go. Because the truth is that you can't get there on your own. And so you need people around you. And so check your tribe and, you know, take a step and and try to try your best to not be insecure around stronger people. Because, again, there's nothing the enemy would love than to steal your life to the fullest by just making you insecure all the time. And when you walk in God's grace, then you can walk with the confidence that, hey, you know what, God, your grace is sufficient enough for me. And, And wherever I'm weak, it's totally cool because the people around me are going to be strong. Check your tribe. Check your tribe. And the last thing is that he surrounded, he surrounded himself with faith. He surrounded himself with faith. This is like probably the most important one in my opinion. He surrounded himself with faith. Now, I don't know if he had faith. I don't know if this man had faith. Um, scripture doesn't really tell us that. But Scripture says that these four guys go um, and they, they pick him up. And his four friends see his problem. They say, hey, I can't, I, I, I can't fix this, but I know somebody who can. So they take him to Jesus. Um, they take him to the place that Jesus is Preaching, And I know they have faith for this reason, for, for these few reasons. One, they take their friends to the service that Jesus is at, right? And when they get there, when they get there, they see that the place is packed because they're running late. I mean, their friends took forever to get ready, so they, they packed them up, and then they went. And so, you know, they're there, and it's packed, and they've been turned away. The hospitality team is like, sorry, we don't have any space in the theater, go to the video cafe. And they're just like, no, like, we're not going to go to the video cafe. Like, we want to go uh, to, you know, inside the theater because Jesus is there. I mean, they wanted his, his, their friend to come face to face with Jesus so bad that they did this. They made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it. I mean, think about this for a second. Imagine if somebody so badly wanted to get in here that they decided the best way to do that is to come through our cameo roof right now. I mean, imagine the noise it would make. Imagine the mess it would make. I mean, all you guys would be covered like crazy, you know. And so, like, it would be, it would be insane but these guys so badly wanted their friend to be face to face with Jesus that they went as far as getting involved in the mess and sometimes great faith requires you to get a little bit messy sometimes great faith requires you. and 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 here's the thing if we're called to be the city tribe that we're called to be if we're called to serve the city of San Antonio which in my opinion is the greatest city of all time is you know that we're called to serve then then we have to be a church that's not afraid to get involved in the mess we have to be a church that ignores the inconvenience of it, you know, avoids the easy stuff and gets involved in the mess. And I know without a doubt that's what our senior pastor wants for our church. I know for sure that's what you guys want. I mean, we saw a lot of y'all show up to CAM yesterday at our, at our serve day, and, and you guys got involved in the mess of our city. And, and I mean, even tonight, you know, from, from 7 p.m. to 9 a.m., we're going to have, you know, people in this room serving and pulling an all-nighter with middle school and high school students just for an opportunity to share Jesus and give a little bit of hope to the students of San Antonio. And so, I mean, like, I know we're not afraid to get in the mess, but if there is somebody in here that is, I want to challenge you to, one, surround yourself with a tribe that isn't afraid to get in the mess of your life. And if your tribe, you know, kind of disappears anytime you go through something hard, I want to challenge you to get a new tribe because your tribe should be, you know, ready and willing to get involved in the mess because of the great faith that they have in their God and for you. And so surround yourself with faith. See, these guys got tested, but, this, but, I, but I know they had faith because untested faith is untrusted faith, and um, these guys had faith. I mean, they were rejected 
but they didn't quit. And they kept pushing and pushing. You know, they, they dug a hole and then they, they lowered the mat that the man was lying on. And when Jesus saw their faith, everybody say their faith. their faith. He said to the paralyzed man, son, your sins are forgiven. Now here's the thing. I know they weren't, but they were going to Jesus for a miracle. You know, they were going to Jesus because this guy had a problem that they didn't know how to fix and Jesus did. I don't think they were going to Jesus, particularly with this in mind that like their friend was going to get saved. But here's the thing. When Jesus sees our heart, I mean, his thought processes are, are you know, what good are, are two healthy legs with a broken soul? And he sees your soul. And, he, and, and, and you know, before he messes with any, any of your exterior, before he messes with the season of life you're in or the struggles that you're going through, the first thing that he focuses on, the first thing that he wants is your heart. And he, wants to, and he wants you to understand and know that if your heart is healthy, if your soul is healthy, if you have received him, then it's in that moment that everything else around you can be changed. For the, for the better, too. It's not just for a season, but for the better. And that you can find joy in all seasons of life, not just in the good ones. And so, you know, these religious officials start thinking to themselves, like, you know, why does this fellow talk like this as he's forgiving this man? You know, he's blaspheming. You know, who can afford, or who can forgive sins but God alone? You know, because again, the thing of this day was, man, like this guy's paralyzed because of his sins. And so anytime that Jesus wants to, you know, teach us something, he would typically ask a question. So he asked this question to them. He says, well, which is easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or to say, get up, take your mat and walk? Because he wanted He wanted these people to understand and know that the greater miracle this day was not the man getting healed. Like, yeah, that's amazing. And then that should be amazing. But the greater miracle was that this man was saved and that his eternity was, was, you know, salvaged forever and forever. He would never spend a moment apart from God the Father. And so this was the greatest miracle. And so he tells the man, I'll tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. And so he got up real quick, I'm sure. Like, I would have just been out of there. And so uh, he took his mat, and he walked out in full view of them all. And this amazed everyone, and they praised God. We have never seen anything like this. And so, you know, Jesus deserves all the glory all the time. He deserves the glory for the story. But we would be fools to not acknowledge the role that this man's tribe played in his future forever being changed. And it was all because of their faith. It was all because of their faith. You know, check your tribe. You know, make sure your tribe is a tribe that empowers you, doesn't enable you, that, you know, is strong where you're weak and has great faith. I mean, I remember there was a season in my life where, you know, I, I had just turned 18, um, and it was, it was around summertime, and I got diagnosed with, uh, with cancer. And, and you can imagine, like, that was the most terrifying news I've ever received in my entire life. Um, in fact, this is a picture of my first day, my first chemo treatment. And, um, and I remember, like, how terrified I was. And I, but I also remember the first week of chemo was, like, the worst thing I've ever experienced. And um, and I quickly played that victim card, like, so fast. It was pretty amazing. And, and just, just before, I'm just going to ruin the story first for you. Um, I, I have, uh, this past November, November 20th, actually, I uh, celebrated seven years cancer-free, which is, like, awesome. You know, praise God. I'm so grateful for my life. I'm grateful for all that. But, but, but the, journey, the journey to getting there was, was rough, not just because the treatments were hard, but because, you know, I, I chose to play that victim card big time. I remember there was a guy, it was one of my... One of my best friends, his name was Matt. He walked up to me, and he came to tell me about um, his bad day. And I remember just, like, unloading on him. Like, just, like, how can you come to talk to me about your bad day? Do you not know what I'm going through? Like, how dare you? You know, and I was making him feel so bad. And, and I was doing this to a lot of people. I remember my sister's here. I love you. And I'm just going to point you out here. I remember my sister, she called me uh, to tell me about her day. And she was, like, all happy and really great. And I remember I said, I said oh, you're so annoying. Like, just like, just like that. I, 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 you remember that. She's still, she's still mad at me for that. Like, and, that's, and that's how I was responding to everybody because I wanted everybody to feel bad for me. Like, poor Robbie. You know, like, it sucks to be him. You know, also, I wanted people to feel that way for me. That wasn't until one of my youth pastors, he called me because he heard I was doing this. And, and, he, and he lit me up. And he was just like, what is wrong with you, man? Because how, how can you possibly walk this life and think that your life is more important than the person next to you? I mean, yeah, sure, your bad day might be worse than their bad day, but their bad day is still a bad day. 
he challenged me. And then he empowered me to think a new thought and to think differently about the way that I viewed my sickness. And man, if I didn't first have that in my life, I didn't have that man in my life to challenge me like that, that tribe to challenge me, then that experience would have gone way worse. But here's the thing. As my treatments got harder, I got weaker. You know, there were moments where I couldn't leave the bed. There were moments where I felt like I couldn't walk. There were moments where, where I felt like I was just trapped. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't go to work. I couldn't do anything. And, and I remember person after person showed up to take me to, to treatments, to cook me food, to, you know, make sure that I was doing okay. I mean, my mom came over to my house at like two in the morning to rush me to the ER at one point. But imagine if I chose to not reach out and ask for help in those moments. My tribe was there because they were strong where I was weak. And I remember there was a moment where I was laying in bed and I just, I honestly just wanted to die. I said, I, I, I can't do this anymore. I had felt like, man, God, you left me. Like, you know, there's, there's no point in this anymore. Like, we're, you're not making this any easier for me. And so I don't get it. And I was on the phone with my, with my good friend and pastor, Colin McKnight, and and I was talking to him, and he was, you know, talking to me, and he was, he was hearing me, and, and he asked me this question. This question forever changed the way that really I lived my life. And, and he asked, he goes, hey, man, do you, do you still believe in God? I mean, is it, because I'm talking to a person that, who, who it seems like you don't. And I was like, of course I do. Why would you even ask me that? And, and then he asked, well, why in the world would you ever think that a God so great and so amazing who promises everything to you would ever leave you. Why would, he, why would you be the first person that he leaves? And I, and I said, man, I, it just feels like he has. And he told me, well, you know what, man? I have faith that he didn't leave you, and so you can borrow some of my faith. And to tell you, man, like it was that conversation that really helped me get through what would be the next couple of months of just hell and just terribleness. But it was a moment that my tribe shared with me their faith. I was able to keep going and my experience was, was far better because of it. And so right now, I just want you to look at your row. Just look down your row. And for you fellas, this is an opportunity for you to make eye contact with that girl you've been trying to make eye contact with the entire night. This is, this is what faith looks like. There's no doubt that there are people in here that have faith. How do I know this? Well, because for some of you, it took all of you to get up out of bed today, to get dressed, to get your kids ready, which is insane, I'm sure. I used to have a fish, I know. <laughs> and to get into the car, to drive down, try to grab a quick taco or something while you're way down here, and to get, only to get stuck at the devil train just so that you can be in your seat right now. Like, I know, I know there's faith in here. And for some of you, and, you, and you, you know you live in a tribe, and you walk in a tribe that doesn't have faith, I want to encourage you that you are sitting in a place right now that does. And I want you to, to do something. I want you to go grab a tribe menu. I want you to, to email somebody on, the, on there. I want you to go to our website. I want you to talk to the person next to you and say, hey, I don't really have a tribe of faith. Where can I find one? I promise you there's somebody in this room that will show you exactly how to do that. Because you need a tribe of faith. You need a tribe that will empower you. You need a tribe that will be strong where you're weak. You need a tribe that will have enough faith for the both of you. So that the moments that you need Somebody, the moments you need, aside from God, like, are you there? Your tribe can step in and say, yeah, he is. And for some of us in here, you're no longer that paralyzed person. In fact, you, you have, you've come here, you, you now know God, you've found freedom, you know your purpose, and you've discovered it. But it's that last part, it's the making a difference part. You are fully capable of being one of the four, everybody say four. Four, 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 four. <laughs> You're capable of being one of the four. And, and you're choosing not to be. And so today, my challenge for you 
because you are a part of our tribe. And we're a tribe that challenges, not enables. And my challenge to you is to step out in faith a little bit and become one of the four and go find the one. Because you know somebody at your work, you know one of your friends, you know somebody that's in your family who is stuck in a season that they so badly want to escape from. And you know the answer. And you know exactly where to point them. And it's by your faith. It's by your faith that they will get up off their mat and they will walk out. And the people around them are going to be amazed. But it starts with you. So I want to challenge you to step out. Because you are one of the four. And so let's bow our heads and let's pray together. You know, there's no doubt that our tribe can do a lot of things for us. But one of the things that it can't do is it can't, you know, get us to step into relationship with Christ. I mean, they, if they could do it for us, they would, but, but they can't. And one thing that's significant about this is that, you know, Jesus, yes, he came here to save us and he came here to defeat sin and death and to perform miracles, but, but he also came here to restore our relationship with God and with each other, which is why he's called the friend of sinners. Because when sin entered this world through Adam and Eve, it did a lot of great damage. And the greatest thing that it did was it severed that relationship between us and God and us and each other. And the way that we now repair that relationship and restore that relationship is by stepping into a relationship with Christ and acknowledging that there is no life to the full without Jesus in our hearts and our lives committed to Christ. And so if you walked in today and you so badly want that life to the full and you so badly want freedom from the areas of your life that you feel so stuck in. It's as simply as believing in your heart and confessing with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord for that to happen. And so, you know, if that's you, you can repeat after me. You can say this out loud. You can say this to, your, to yourself in your mind. But, but Lord, I, I acknowledge that up until this point, my life has kept me from you. But today, I choose that I no longer want to walk a life of isolation. I no longer want to live a life where I'm not living to the full, but in fact, I want to live it with you. And today I choose to believe in who you are, that you came down to this earth. You were born of a woman. You, were, you, you lived a perfect life and you died this incredible death on a cross just to restore my relationship with the people around me, but also my relationship with you, God. And so I choose to step into that, and I choose to believe you and receive you into my heart today. And whether you have just, you've, you've prayed that prayer to, to know Jesus today, or whether you've known Jesus for 20 years, each one of you can be one of the four. And so right now, I pray that, that God, you just place the one in our hearts and our minds and that we take our tribe and we go to that one and, and we bring that one along and invite them to be a part of our tribe. We invite them to experience a God who loves them and cares about them and, and will die for them because it's because of this God that I have found freedom, that we have found freedom. And so... Lord, I thank you so much for today. I thank you for my tribe. I thank you for every single person in this room and every person that, that didn't get to make it today. And God, I just pray that you just bless the rest of our week and you bless um, the rest of our Sunday until we meet again next week. And so, Lord, we love you. We thank you and we praise you. And everybody said, amen. Oh, come on, everybody said, amen, amen, amen. amen. Hey, you know, as we, as we close out today, I want to remind you of a, of a few things. One, our course our financial stewardship um you know one of the ways that we live our life to the full is really just trusting the lord with our finances and you know I, I know you know what we're thinking sometimes you know that you know city tribe just wants our money and that's that's totally understandable to think uh, especially if, if you're not fully bought into what we're doing here yet but you know i want to encourage you that you know whether it's here or whether you go to another church and tithe that i want to encourage you to do it because we are so confident that when you do tithe and when you trust god with when you trust god with your finances that he will bless you and so whether you do it here, if you go to another church and you do it, we just want you to get a blessing, so come and tell us how you were blessed. And um, ways that we accomplish that is in person at the tithing box or the tithing kiosk. 
um, online at citytribe.church, or you can text the tithe, CCDT, space, the dollar amount to 74483. And, you know, when you tithe, you provide opportunities for, for things to happen. Like tonight, you know, we're, we're going to have this place um, totally flipped around, and it's going to be um, a, a room to have a lock in it in. We're going to, you know, play a lot of games. We're going to share Jesus with a bunch of students. And um, it's all because of your generosity that we get to do stuff like this. So I want to say thank you, um, Tribe. And, you know, if you are a student here and you're like, ooh, lock in, that sounds fun. I know you're on Thanksgiving break. You can still get registered. Um, there are some students outside right now with these cards that will tell you exactly how to register from that. Um, but that is going to be from 7 p.m. to 9 a.m. tonight. We might throw up. I don't know. We'll see what happens. It's going to be we're going to eat a lot of food. So I don't know. Who knows? Um, so um, let's, let's stand together. Let's join hands, and we will go ahead and get on out of here. Let me say a blessing over you guys real quick. So, so you know, Tribe, as we leave here today and, we are, and as we are just dead set on discovering our life to the full, you know, I pray that, you know, as we check our tribe and, and we think about the people that we surround ourselves with and that we yoke up with, you know, I, I pray that, you know, we have this new vision that we need a tribe that will empower us and that enable us, that will be strong where we are weak and um, that will have great faith to take us and point us to exactly where we need to go, and that's Jesus. And so, guys, I love you guys. I hope you have a great weekend. Go Cowboys. We'll see you all next week. Bye. Does it take to see you?